In this video, I'm going to explore the idea with compelling scientific and archaeological evidence that the Vikings actually landed in Hudson's Bay about a thousand years ago and traveled through Manitoba to Minnesota. These days, it's accepted archaeological knowledge that the Vikings landed in Newfoundland at Lanceau Meadows and set up a colony there. As more research is done on the site in Newfoundland, it became clear that not just one colony was set up in the New World, but many. Sagas from the time of the Vikings tell tales of their journeys to the New World, mentioning multiple places named Heluland, widely believed to be modern-day Baffin Island, Markland, widely believed to be Labrador, and Vinland, which no one has ever found. The Vinland map claims to have 11th century knowledge of North America from the Vikings. On it, Vinland is shown in an area north of Lanstow Meadows, with Hudson's Bay and the Gulf of St. Lawrence clearly shown. How could Hudson's Bay be mapped out unless it was navigated? It's strong evidence the Vikings made it to North America. The problem is, whenever any Viking landing other than Lanstow Meadows seems to be mentioned, the work is immediately discredited and defunded. There seems to be a government conspiracy to cover up any evidence of Vikings in North America other than Lanceau Meadows. Dr. Sarah Parcock, an Egyptologist and professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, used satellite imagery to find what looks like two more Viking colonies living in the Arctic on Baffin Island and Newfoundland in locations that seem to match up with the Norse sagas. You can watch her TED talk about the technology she used in the links below. Suddenly, Dr. Parcock's worth in Atlantic Canada was discredited and removed from the accepted scientific knowledge of the area. Being an American, she was banned from the area by the government. Dr. Parcock gave up on the Viking settlements and refocused on Egypt and moved forward with her career as if it never happened. Archaeologist Dr. Pat Sutherland actually unearthed a Viking village from about a thousand years ago on Baffin Island. Dr. Sutherland began a proper scientific archaeological dig on Baffin Island around 2012, originally believing it to be Dorset, an Arctic people that preceded the Inu Inuit. The dig was fully government funded, but when Dr. Sutherland began to realize the site was actually European and started to publish this information, her funding was suddenly cancelled and everything abruptly ended. Dr. Sutherland's professional career was discredited and she was pushed into obscurity in scientific circles. Yet. Years later, one of the most respected Canadian television documentary series, The Nature of Things, did an entire episode on her work in 2015, also questioning why she was suddenly discredited. Another popular Canadian television documentary program, The Fifth Estate, addressed the issue of Canadian research being cancelled without explanation in an episode from 2014 called Silence of the Labs. One might think this is a conspiracy theory, but when two separate PhD professors get shut down and discredited, and then two separate major Canadian documentaries air television episodes about it, ending with unanswered questions, one starts to think there might be something going on here. The silencing of proper archaeological work may be due to northern Canadian land claims by some Aboriginal groups. The Dorset are supposedly extinct, wiped out by either European disease or genocide by warfare with the more aggressive Inuit people. If a surviving Dorset bloodline were to exist and be found, Inuit land claims all throughout the north might be in dispute. With billions of dollars in potential natural resources at stake, it becomes difficult to change the current accepted version of Inuit sovereignty in the area. This might be why research on Vikings living with and trading with the Dorset is being muted at a governmental level. Now look at the map. If you travel across to the New World from Greenland and down Baffin Island, you have to cross the Hudson Strait to go south. You can't miss this, and a saltwater channel would be irresistible to explore. It's clear sailing through Hudson Strait to Hudson's Bay and the logical landing is the Nelson River. According to the Viking sagas, Vinland had salmon, wildlife, trees, and wild berries, or grapes, all abundant at the mouth of the Nelson River. Could this be Vinland? It actually fits the description in the ancient sagas. 
Nothing has been found yet, but I'm confident time will reveal a Viking settlement in this area. There is a huge question to answer going forward with the Hudson's Bay, Manitoba to Minnesota Viking hypothesis. If the Vikings traveled inland via rivers from Hudson's Bay to Manitoba and through to Minnesota, then why not go inland via the St. Lawrence River on through to the Great Lakes? I believe the reason the Vikings didn't travel through the Great Lakes was the Great Lakes area was heavily populated at this time by multiple different indigenous nations, many of which were hostile, well-armed, and extremely dangerous. Travel through their territories would be difficult, risky, and almost impossible at this time. Traveling through Hudson's Bay, the Vikings traveled into Dorset territory, a people who the Vikings already had good trading relationships with. Using the Dorset to get peaceful introductions to more southern indigenous nations as the Vikings traveled further south just made sense. Also, the Viking presence in North America disappeared about the same time the Dorset people went extinct. Was North America closed to the Vikings when their friends and allies, the Dorset, disappeared from existence? I do have an idea of what might have happened to the Dorset. Much like Columbus, the Vikings had to have also brought disease from Europe. Diseases the indigenous Dorset had no immunity to. The northern isolation of the Dorset may have slowed the transmission of the disease, keeping it within Arctic communities and not really touching many other indigenous nations of that time. Ravaged and weakened by disease, the Inuit easily wiped out Dorset communities, taking their lands. Back to the Viking journey, traveling the Nelson River to Lake Winnipeg, there must be some evidence the Vikings came this way. There have been numerous rune stones found along the path from Hudson's Bay through Manitoba to Minnesota. In 1783, a French explorer named La Verande found a ruined stone near Minot, North Dakota. The stone was shipped to France and lost during the chaos of the French Revolution. In 1898, the Kensington rune stone was found near Alexandria, Minnesota, a major find this unexplained artifact with Norse ruin texts on it can only be explained by a Viking presence pre-Columbus in North America. Volumes of research have been done on this ruin, mostly positive, but it seems to be pushed aside as just an unexplained mystery in the history books. In 1925, a farmer near Husavik, an area just south of what is now Gimli, Manitoba, on the west shores of Lake Winnipeg, found an ancient rune stone with what looked like Norse writing on it. This stone seems to have disappeared, yet the story persists among some local people. There are more examples. All seem to be dismissed or minimalized by government-controlled agencies. But the elephant in the room is 15, yes, 15 Viking ships have been unearthed in the Dakota and Minnesota areas and the evidence of such has been mostly repressed by native groups, Inuit in particular, due to the legislation in the USA that states any artifacts found prior to 1492 are the property of indigenous Native Americans. The wood in these ships can be carbon dated, but that hasn't been done. Why? It really looks like Viking colonization in North America prior to 1492 is being repressed and removed from the history books for land claim issues. What's interesting is traveling the route from Hudson's Bay via the Nelson River through Lake Winnipeg and then down the Red River to Minnesota is that the area is currently littered with numerous Norse communities from Iceland, Norway and other Scandinavian countries. Even the Minnesota NFL football team is called the Vikings. Did these people return to repopulate ancient colonies? Powerful political interests don't want this investigated. Archaeological digs have been defunded and shut down. Artifacts have been lost and not allowed to be carbon dated. Huge efforts were made to discredit and shame accredited scientists who investigate this topic. It's like we're not supposed to know about Viking colonization in North America for fear it might disrupt current treaties and land claims. I'd like to see more research on archaeological digs starting with the East Coast Canada 
and moving west through Hudson's Bay because with how much evidence has been leaking out, we all know the truth is out there. If you like this video and videos like this, you can actually manipulate YouTube's algorithm by subscribing and hitting the bell. By subscribing and hitting the bell, you tell YouTube these are the kind of videos you want more of. And YouTube will suggest more videos like this for you to watch. So hit the subscribe button and the bell. Thanks for watching. See you next time.